Welcome to CMH Heli Skiing. CMH is wilderness skiing and riding in an uncontrolled and wild mountain environment. It is your responsibility to help manage the risk by listening to your guides and pilots and by following their instructions. CMH guides are certified professionals that have dedicated their careers to managing the risk and hazards of skiing in the mountains, as well as helping guests achieve their goals. By listening to and following your guide, you will reduce the risks involved with skiing in this uncontrolled environment. If you have any questions, or if you do not understand any of the instructions, please ask your guide for clarification. To manage the risk, your guide will lead the way down the mountain. Never ski or ride in front of your guide unless directed otherwise. You will stay within an appropriate distance of the guide's track so each member of the group can still be within the guide's designated path. If you lose track of the guide or become separated from the group, traverse back in the direction that you last saw the other tracks. If you can't locate the tracks, you must stop and contact the guide on the radio. I've lost the tracks. Do not keep moving downhill unless you know where the group is located. You may end up in a dangerous area. Due to the uncontrolled nature of this mountainous environment, you must ski in control so you can stop or navigate around unmarked hazards. These include cliffs, stumps and logs, creeks, abrupt road banks, tree wells, crevasses, gullies, and cornices, which may be near the landing site. When you become tired, stop and take a break. Consider returning to the lodge at the next possible opportunity rather than risk becoming injured. You will always ski with a partner. Partners can help when you are stuck or have fallen over, or if you have lost a ski. But most importantly, partners help manage the hazard of tree wells while skiing in the forest. The most effective method for partner skiing is to have the rear partner keep visual contact with the lead partner, while the rear partner makes a distinct noise so that the person in the lead can always hear them. If either of the partners loses contact with the other, stop immediately and try to re-establish contact. If this fails, radio the guide and keep trying to find your partner. For Jeff. Uh, I lost my partner. Do not ski down to the guide as your location will be used to determine the last known location of your partner. Tree wells are a serious hazard that need to be respected. During the winter, snow falls around the tree but leaves a hollow space around the trunk of the tree. This space can be a hazard if you fall into it. When you're skiing in the forest, never make a sudden stop or turn directly above a tree. Instead, make your turns after you have passed the tree or in the spaces between them. If you do fall and slide towards a tree, make every effort to stay on top and remain upright. If you end up in the tree well, remain calm and do not struggle. Hold on to the trunk or branches. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay, but uh, I'm stuck. I can't get out. Create and maintain an airspace with your hands or arm, and if possible, contact the guide with the radio. Hey, it's Jeff in group two. Uh, my partner fell in a tree well. She's uh, she's okay, but she's she's pretty deep in there. I'm gonna need some help. To assist a fallen rider in a tree well, approach from below and dig towards them in a conveyor belt fashion. Once you have dug to at least their waist, pull them down and out of the tree well.
Every member of the group will carry a radio, avalanche transceiver, and CMH backpack with probe and shovel. Due to interference with avalanche transceivers, your cell phones and electronic devices must be in airplane mode or turned off and be kept at least 20 centimeters away from your transceiver. For safety reasons, it is critical that we minimize weight in the helicopters. Please do not fill your pack with extra items. Despite our most diligent efforts to minimize the hazard of avalanches, avalanches can still occur. If you find yourself caught in an avalanche, yell to alert your partner. Stay upright and ski or ride downhill and off to the side. If you have an avalanche flotation device, deploy it immediately. Fight to stay on the surface, as if you were swimming in turbulent water. If you are becoming buried, attempt to make yourself an air pocket and remain calm. We will find you. If another member of the group has been caught, make a radio call to the guides and pilot that there has been an avalanche. Choose a leader to coordinate the initial response and do a head count. If you are a solo searcher, turn your transceiver to search and travel down the debris pile in a zigzagging fashion until you pick up a signal. In a group, and if it's safe, turn your transceiver to search and visually make sure that all transceivers are in search mode. If the group is spread out, partners should check each other's transceivers. The searchers should spread out 20 meters or 65 feet across the avalanche debris and make their way systematically down the debris pile while searching the whole area for a signal. When indicated, Move in the direction of the arrow on your transceiver, but most importantly, ensure the numbers are getting smaller. When you are further away and the numbers are larger, you can travel faster. But as the numbers become smaller, slow down and be more accurate. You do not want to miss the lowest number. As you get closer, call out the number on your transceiver to alert your partners and guide that you are close to locating someone. When the arrow disappears, begin systematically identifying the area where the number is the smallest. Place a visual indicator such as a ski pole or a hat to identify the location of the smallest number. This is the area where you will probe and eventually dig. Probe the area in a spiral pattern, pushing the probe in perpendicular to the snow surface. The probe hit should be roughly the same depth as the lowest number that was shown on your transceiver. When you locate the buried person with the probe, leave the probe in as a target to dig towards. Step down a shovel distance and start digging in a conveyor belt fashion. When you reach the person who is buried, clear the snow from the face and chest first to ease their breathing. Make sure their airway is clear of snow. If there's more than one person buried, use the mark function on the transceiver and use any additional rescuers to continue searching the rest of the avalanche. CMH uses several different helicopters to access our lodges and mountains. You will be educated on the specifics of the helicopter you will be using. To help manage the hazard of the helicopter, please follow the instructions of your pilot and guide. All helicopters share these common hazards and safety systems. The primary hazards with helicopters are the main rotor and tail rotor. 
be aware that these rotate very quickly and become very difficult to see. The main rotor can dip well below head height or even lower due to uneven ground or deep snow. Never approach the tail of the helicopter. Only approach the helicopter with your guide. We will not depart without you. The helicopter can produce extreme winds, however it is critical to keep watching it at all times and to remain kneeling within the pilot's field of vision. Secure all clothing and loose articles. Items that blow away may damage the helicopter. If an item blows away, do not chase after it. Tell your guide, and if possible, they will retrieve it. Do not use electronic devices on a stick around the helicopter. Do not place anything outside of the helicopter while in flight. Do not enter the aircraft until signaled by the pilot or guide. Use the handle or latch to open the door and gently slide it back. When you have entered the aircraft, take the furthest away alternating seats, put on your seatbelt and adjust it to fit. Your seatbelt must remain on at all times until the aircraft is landed and the pilot or guide has signaled that you may exit the aircraft. In addition to the standard exit windows, the helicopter is equipped with push-out windows, removable front headrests, and front doors with emergency release handles. The seat legs may be used as ladders. Each helicopter is equipped with an emergency locator device, fire extinguisher, first aid kit, advanced medical supplies, and rescue gear. Instructions for their use are printed on the device and cabin safety card. The helicopters give us access to the best skiing and riding on the planet. Although they are loud and travel fast, we ask that you move slowly and deliberately around them. There's no need to rush. Always listen to your pilot and guide for instructions and ask questions if you need clarification. Heli skiing and riding has hazards that are different than resort skiing. Mountain conditions are ever changing and you must remain alert and attentive to your guide's instructions at all times. Music, drugs and alcohol are prohibited. Your safety is our primary concern and managing the risk must be a shared responsibility. Together, we can mitigate the hazards and enjoy this amazing mountain experience. We look forward to skiing and riding with you.